Welcome back to the admin bar. My name is Kyle and today we're going to be talking about page heroes. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, a page hero is typically what we call the first section on any given page. It typically has the page title in it, but can often have more than that. Now, because we're going to be including some kind of page hero on every page of our website, we might as well get good at doing them, right? So today we're going to talk about three different ways you can set up page heroes. We'll start with a good but basic page hero. We'll then move into a better solution that includes dynamic data. And finally, we'll go into the best solution that includes dynamic data and gives you more scalability and customization options. Like usual, I'll be doing this inside of Generate Press and Generate Blocks, but most page builders have similar systems to this. So even if you're using something different, I think you can take away something from this video today. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in and get started. To give us something to work with, I've imported the Arborist template from the Generate Press site library, but I've gone ahead and deleted all the page heroes so we can start from scratch. To start us off with a basic page hero, we'll first jump into this About Us page and go ahead and add a new section. So here inside the editor, I'm gonna go ahead and press Enter and we'll enter a new container with an inner container inside of it. For this outer container, we'll go ahead and give it just a little bit of padding. I'm not gonna spend forever on design here, but I do want something that looks decent. Now inside of this wrapper here, I wanna go ahead and add our page title. So I'm gonna add a headline and I'm gonna change this to the H1 since it's the primary headline on this page. We'll go ahead and write the words about us. And then I'd like to do just a little bit of styling to this page hero. So we'll go down here to the borders and I'm gonna add a one pixel top border, maybe of this kind of green color, this olive green color we have here. Now I don't want it extending all the way to the edge of the section and I want a little bit of space here. So we'll go back to the padding and we'll change the top padding value to maybe 16 pixels. And then we'll go into the display options and change this to inline flex, which will shorten the length of this border to the length of the text. So now that we have that, I think that's pretty good for a title, but I'd like to add some kind of background image in here. So with this outermost container selected, I'm gonna go down here to backgrounds and I'm gonna choose an image URL. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab our leaf logo and select it. And you can see this is placed this in the background of this section. It's just fairly dark, so we don't have much contrast here on the letters. To deal with that, I'm gonna go ahead and change this opacity down to something like, I don't know, maybe 0.15, something fairly light, but gives us a little bit of texture in the background. Now we can go ahead and check this on tablet. It still looks good there and we'll check it on mobile. And I think it looks good there as well. We might want to tighten up the padding here. So I'll go back to this instead of 80 pixels. Maybe we'll do something like 60 on the top and bottom. And that will make this section just a little less tall. All right, with that done, we'll go ahead and hit update and we'll go take a look on the front end. So now our About Us page has this new hero that includes the About Us title that we added with the overline on top of it and this background section. Of course, now if we go to our services page or our gallery page, we don't have the heroes in there. So we're gonna need to replicate this design on all these pages. This is an okay solution for designing page heroes, but it's not the best. I wanna go ahead and show you the limitations though. We'll go back here into the editor, back into the desktop view and grab this page hero container. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this container. We'll go to the front end of the site again, and now we'll go to our services page. Here we can hit edit page. We can press return and paste that hero in. Now, of course, this is our services page, so we need to change this text to services and we hit update. Now we will have to go through and do the same process of copying and pasting this page hero into every single page inside of this system. Now, if you've been doing this for a while, I'm sure you're already spotting some issues with setting things up this way, but let me walk you down the path if you haven't been here before. Let's say we go ahead and copy and paste each one of these hero sections into all the different pages on our website. Now our client comes back and decides they want the color of the background to be a little bit more contrasty and not blend in. So we'll go here to this About Us page hero, we'll click on that outermost container, and we'll change the background color to this light cream color. We'll go ahead and hit update, we'll view it on the front end, and we'll send it over to our client. Our client really loves this look and wants us to replicate it across all the other page heroes on the site. Well, to do this, since we did all the page heroes on a one by one basis, we're now gonna have to go to each page on the site, edit the page, click on the outermost container and change the background to that light beige color. 
Obviously, if there's just two or three pages, this isn't the end of the world, but if you're talking about a site with dozens of pages, this is a lot of extra work and there is a better way. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about how we can build some more maintainability into this page hero by talking about our better system. To solve the scalability problem, what we'll do is actually use Generate Press Pro's Elements feature to create a dynamic page hero template that we can then assign to all the pages on our website. This is gonna give us a much more flexible system that's easier to maintain in the long run. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. Back here inside of our About Us page, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this outermost container again, and we're gonna go ahead and copy that so we don't have to recreate it. We'll go to the back end of the website and under elements, we'll click add new. We wanna choose a block element and hit create. Here, we'll call this page hero and we can go ahead and paste in the hero we created. On the right hand side, we wanna click the element tab here and we wanna change the element type to page hero, which is a specific element type here inside of Generate Press. We also wanna make sure we have the correct hook selected. It automatically did after header, which is exactly where we want this to be hooked in. Now, since we're gonna use this design across multiple pages, we can't hard code the title in like we did on the individual about us and service pages. Instead, we need to use dynamic data. To do that, I'll just go ahead and select this block. Here, we'll go back to the block tab and we'll scroll down until we find enable dynamic data. We'll go ahead and turn that on and we'll change this content source to title. This is gonna ensure whenever this element is displayed on the front end, it's gonna pull in that individual page's title. This is all gonna happen dynamically and this is what makes this a much more maintainable system in the long run. Here under the display rules, we get to decide where we want this page hero to show. For simplicity's sake on this site, I'm gonna go ahead and select entire site and I'm gonna exclude the front page because on the front page of the site, the home page, we've actually designed a unique hero already. So with those things in place, we'll go ahead and hit publish and we'll go take a look at how this is working on the front end of our site. Now, when I go to the about us page, we have the title that says about us. When we go to services, we have the services title. We never set anything up for gallery, but because we created this dynamic template for our page heroes, when we go to the gallery page, we actually have the hero in place and it already says gallery. Now this already shows you the power of creating this inside of an element because we've created multiple page heroes for multiple pages in just one place. But to really hit home with this, let's say the client changed their mind again and they decided the white background was better after all. All we have to do to make that change site-wide is go back into our element, grab this outermost container, go to our background, and we'll go ahead and clear that out. We can hit update. And now when we refresh on the front end, we can see this hero is back to being white. And as we go throughout any of these pages where we've assigned our hero, we have the white background. Now this is a huge improvement over our original system where we were copying and pasting the page hero from one page to the next. But if I'm totally honest, I don't love the idea of just using our page title as the H1 on all these pages. Typically, I'm working with SEO or conversion rate optimization in mind, and I want something a little bit better for my H1 than actually the page title of that page. In order to solve that problem, we need to move into our best page hero system, which is gonna open up some more dynamic capabilities and give us the ultimate flexibility. To set up our best page hero system, we actually need to install and activate advanced custom fields. Luckily, we can use the free version from the repo, so we'll go into plugins, click add new, and it's search for advanced custom fields. We'll hit install now, and we'll go ahead and activate this plugin. Hey, I hate to interrupt this video, but I wanted to tell you about a brand new, exclusive, and completely free resource I put together here for my Generate loving friends on YouTube. It's called the six essential tweaks to a perfect Generate website, and it's the six tweaks that I think are most important to get the best results out of Generate Press and Generate Blocks. If you use the link down in the video description below or go to the adminbar.com forward slash generate, I'll give you instant access to all the code, insight to what I'm using it for, and a full video walkthrough. All right, now let's jump back into the video. Here inside the ACF options, we'll go into our field groups and we'll click add new to add a new field group. We'll call this page hero just for clarity's sake. And we wanna add two different fields in here. This first one can be a text field, which is fine. And we're gonna call this primary headline. It'll go ahead and give us a field name here of primary underscore headline. And we can scroll down to add another field. Again, we're gonna use a text field here and we'll do sub headline. Here it's gonna do sub 
underscore headline, and that's totally fine with me. Now we have to go down to the settings and the location rules to decide where these custom fields are gonna show up. So here I want this to be if the post type is equal to, and we're gonna change this to page, since we wanna use these different custom fields on all our page heroes. I'll go ahead and hit save changes here, and we can go back into the about us page we were working with before. Now with these custom fields in place, if we scroll down to the bottom, we have this new meta field area for page hero. Here we have the primary headline and the subheadline. This is what we're gonna be using to determine what text actually goes into our header. So here, let's just say learn about Arborist as our primary headline, which I think is a better headline than just about us. Now for the subheadline, we'll just paste in some website Ipsum text since I don't wanna spend a bunch of time copywriting. We'll go ahead and hit update on this page and we'll need to go ahead and set up the text for these custom fields for all the pages we're gonna use our page hero. I'll do that now off screen so you don't have to sit through and watch me doing it. Okay, I've gone ahead and added text to all the custom fields on our pages here. But as you can see, we're still just seeing the page title here even though I've filled in those custom fields. We need to go back into our element and connect those custom fields to our page hero. To do that, I'll just hover over elements here and we'll click on our page hero. Now we have two things we need to bring in. First is this H1. We had gone down to the dynamic data earlier and set this content source to title. Now we actually have a custom field we wanna use as the content source. So instead of title, I'm gonna click on post meta. This gives us the option to insert our own post meta field. And what we did was primary underscore headline. We'll go ahead and hit enter there. And now this is gonna bring in our primary headline. We also set this up to have a sub headline. So I'm gonna go in here and add another headline block. We'll change this to a paragraph since it's not actually gonna be a headline. And we'll scroll down to our dynamic data and enable it. Again, we're gonna choose post meta and we're gonna change this meta field to sub underscore headline, which is the name of the custom field we assigned. We'll go ahead and hit update on our page hero now, and we'll go take a look at the front end. Now you can see on the front end, instead of this about us page saying about us as the title, it says learn about Arborist. We can also see our sub headline here, which was brought in dynamically. Of course, now if we go to the services page, we see full service lawn and landscape along with our sub headline. The gallery page says view our beautiful creations, which I think is a much better title than just the words gallery. For me, this is so much better of a solution because we can actually dictate what we want that H1 of the page to be without messing with all of our page titles. Not only that, but it gives us the ability to customize our page heroes even more. We can add things like a sub headline like you saw here in this demo. In fact, in some of my sites, I actually include a custom field for button text and button URL so I can include some kind of call to action inside my page heroes. What's really neat is that if you leave any of those fields blank, they just won't show up on the front end. So this means we're actually able to vary our page heroes a little bit on a page by page basis, depending on whether or not we fill in different fields. I'd be curious to know if you're already using a templating system like Generate Press's Elements to create your page heroes, or if you've been going through and pasting them in one by one. Hopefully I demonstrated why using a templating system really levels things up in terms of maintainability and flexibility. If you learned something in this video, consider going ahead and giving it a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch my next one, go ahead and hit subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers and I could really use your help. We'll see you in the next video.